Hi, I'm Vanelli. And I'm Abba Shapiro. And we're members of the Skylum Education Team, and we're live here in Las Vegas at, at WPPI. WPPI. <laughs> okay. So, Abba, um, we're here photographing, talking to people, educating people. You showed me an image on your laptop. That looks right. absolutely awesome. Right, and, and, and we're going to do something really kind of cool here. Uh, I always try to like book a hotel room where I have a view um, or find a view because I always like to shoot out the window and, and get something. And I shot a panorama this morning because I have these great mountains in the background. Now, one of the great things is Luminar works really well as a plug-in to Lightroom. And Lightroom has a really cool feature where you can stitch together a panorama. And now you can even stitch together a high dynamic range panorama, which means I took bracketed shots and underexposed, overexposed, and properly exposed, and I'm gonna to merge together those as well as the, the, the panorama, and then we're gonna send it to Luminar to really do the magic, and then we can shift it right back to Lightroom. It's pretty cool. That's gonna be awesome. All right, let's check it out. So if we take a look, this is, of course, Luminar. I'm gonna switch over to Lightroom, and I've actually already done this just to make sure that, you know, it happens quickly. It's like when you do a cooking show, the before and after. <laughs> it takes Lightroom a little bit of a while to do this, but if you take a look at the screen, you can see I have shot vertically so I can get as much resolution as possible. And yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you, because I really love how it came out. So you shot vertical, your three, your, your um, bracketing. Absolutely. And then you moved over just a bit. How did you do your move? Did you just pan over? I, I yeah, I panned over. It's kind of a gut. I tried to. You try to get about thirty percent of the preceding image into the new one, so it has something to match up. I mean, ideally, you can do this on a tripod and shift and shift and shift. I find uh, I'm lazy. I do it <laughs> handheld, but that way I get the shot, and I just kind of went click. It goes click click click. Move over a little bit. Make sure I frame a piece of the building or a piece of the mountain uh, from the previous shot into the uh, so subsequent shot. To find it. Exactly. Perfect. And if you take a look, you can see there's an underexposed one, uh, a properly exposed one, and an overexposed one. And I have all these shots. And I'm simply going to select the first shot and scroll down to the last one and shift click. And this selects all of the shots that I took at this point in time. And sometimes when I do panoramas, I'll switch between vertical and horizontal just so that I have a quick visual reference. Smart. So I don't know, oh yeah, is that from the before or the after? And the great thing is with this selected, you can go up here and you can go to photo and merge. And so of course, I don't have my glasses on so we don't get a glare. So I'm even trying to find merge. So watch this trick. You reach behind yourself and suddenly <laughs> you can get these things and you can find exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we go uh, photo merge and you see Lightroom can do high dynamic range, it can do panorama and the newest release of Classic can do high dynamic panorama merging. What's really cool about this is when I merge it together, uh, these are all camera raw and what Lightroom will do is it'll create a DNG. Interesting. And you know about DNGs. Yes. Digital, ne digital negatives. So I can send this basically a raw file to Luminar, but this is going to be like huge megapixels. Oh, interesting. Gotcha. So I said, would go HDR panorama. It You're right, will. In the past, we would send it as a GIF, as a JPEG, or as a. Or a um, TIFF file. A TIFF file. And that's not as much data. You have all of this resolution and all of the dynamic range that the sensor captured when it's a DNG. So this is a, a wonderful workflow. And so it's analyzing all of these pictures. You can guide it if it doesn't guess right whether you shot this as a spherical or a cylindrical or perspective. In this case, cylindrical or perspective work. And you'll see when you do this, you can ask it to stack all the images together so you can clean up your Lightroom library. And there'll be some other options you can work with such as uh, cropping it automatically. We don't worry about that because we're going to crop it in Luminar. You can also have it do some auto processing. Uh, DNGs, when you do high dynamic range, they tend to be a little bit darker. It's just the nature of a raw file. And you can also use something called boundary warp, which allows you to kind of get the most of the image that, you know, because it doesn't always line up and you have the perspective. So it's going to calculate this and it you'll see. It is a complicated it's a complication cal calculation. That's right. why it's taking forever. Absolutely. I mean, I have, for each frame, I have three images at 24 megapixels. I probably shot 10 or 12 images. 
So you think about that, it's trying to composite, I'm doing the math here, so let's say 75 megapixels, you know, 750 to 1,000 megapixels worth of imagery. And actually, it's a little bit bigger. The, the final image is going to be this great wide panorama. So it's doing the calculations now. Now, by the way, I was told there was going to be no math today right. while we were here at WPPI. Yeah, we don't have to do the math. You just did it in your head. <laughs> yeah. But nobody's, unless somebody checks me, I'm right. <laughs> so I'm good. And as you can see here, I have this great panorama. I shot out the building and I have some choices for if I wanted to do a little bit of auto settings for the dynamic range. And I could crop it, but when it gets sent over, it's going to send over the complete DNG image. So this may be nice for perspective, but the beautiful thing is Luminar will get the full raw uncropped image. And this is the trick. And this is, instead of sending things over, so we're going to say OK and merge. Actually, I'm going to say cancel, because then it does serious calculation, because I've already done it for us uh, right before we started rolling the camera. And I have it right here. So this is the merged image. It looks exactly like that. You can see it's a DNG. And what I can do is, when I send it over, and this is a really cool trick. When you go file, you don't go export with a preset. You go to plugin extras and you can say transfer to Luminar. And when you say transfer, oh. it maintains the DNG. Otherwise, when so Lightroom that, would more make a shift. that's that secret nugget that if you don't do this, it won't go over as a DNG. Absolutely. So you want to go plug in extras, transfer to Luminar. Now this will be pretty easy. It'll send it over and we have Luminar open. It's going to bring it in. And because it's a pretty big file, if we do a get info on this when it comes through, you'll see that it's transferring a file that has a resolution of 20,273 pixels wide by 8,000 pixels high. Wow. Okay. So this will take a wow. second. Now, while this is coming in, at first, when I saw you, when I first saw the image, I thought you were on a deck or something. So where were you when you actually well, took the shot? Well, uh, I was just in my hotel room. And I, I always ask for a view. Window. I shot it through the window. Wow. Um, some of the keys is getting close, making sure they don't have the lights on in the room. Uh, if it's at night, I, I put the curtain behind me so I don't get any reflections, turn off all the lights. And you can get some really pretty panoramas uh, in, in case of this. You just gave us like five quick tips. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, one it's shot. nice picture. You can see it, you know, I, I wasn't really super accurate. Uh, on, on my pan, but I can simply go in, go to the tools menu, I'm going to hit crop, and we're working with a very large digital negative. So the fact that I'm even able to do this, I'm just going to go ahead, hit the crop, turn the, the lock key off, and frame up just so I get the widest panorama possible. Okay? And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and crop out the, uh, the building, Treasure Island, go something like that and get a really nice just mountain panorama but we'll leave it wide because I want to show how we can bring in some great detail so I can go ahead if it was crooked I could go and change my angle I think it's actually pretty straight so I don't need to do that whenever you're working with a slider double click on it it'll reset back to its default throw in the crop and now we can start processing it and I use kind of a variation of a quick and awesome. I call it the Ava quick and awesome. And, <laughs> and all I've done is I've customized my workspace where I've added a develop module and a vignette, two things I like to add anyway when I'm editing with the quick and awesome. So I'm going to use our Accent AI filter very quickly. It'll give me, you know, balance out the tonality, throw in a little bit of the AI sky enhancer brings a nice rich sky in. You can see the clouds are still nice and puffy. They don't turn blue. You know, a lot of times people put a polarizer or a blue filter. The AI for uh, Sky Enhancer does all the thinking for me, which is good because I've used up everything on math. Um, you know, I could play with a little bit of the vibrance, a little clarity. And one of the filters I like to do with panoramas, and I'm going to zoom in, there's a lot of detail here. Wow. I mean, you can see because I've shot this, and it, as I scan around, it'll rebuild. There's a lot of great detail, but I want to really make it pop. So what I like to add is there's a filter called the Detail Enhancer. And what's neat about it is, unlike sharpening, it allows me to accentuate the details in my small, medium, and large pixels. So I'm going to add detail to my small and my medium, but I'm going to remove detail from the large so the sky stays nice and soft. So you can see here, just with this filter, the before, 
and the after. And look how sharp that is. And then I can start bringing out maybe some of the vibrance. I see there's a lot of uh, greenery here. So I'll just play with some filters. I'm going to play with the foliage enhancer. Bring that in, just pop that a little bit. That'll work with the greens. Brings that up. Let's go ahead and bring that back to full screen. Control zero, command zero will let me do it. And this was my before, which is a nice panorama, but you're seeing it's really starting to pop here. And I can really start controlling those colors. And I really like this. This is great. I have this real nice wide screen that I can print all done. And all I have to do when I'm finished is I'll go back and I can simply hit apply and send it back to Lightroom. And it's in my Lightroom catalog. Or if I wanted to, I could take this, I could add another layer, a new adjustment layer, and then I can play with a lot of the looks we have. So I could go back and I say, yeah, let's take a look at some of our landscape looks. And I could play with those on top of my developed image. So maybe I want to go with autumn colors and click on it. And wow, it really does change it. Pops the green a little bit more. We can try a little bit warm sunset. I really love what that just did to the mountains. As a matter of fact, you see how the mountains are now much, uh, much more brown, which they should be. Turn it off. So I love that. We're going to add one more filter and then we'll send it back. And this other filter I really like. I'm going to hit add a uh, new filter. We already there. It's the split color warmth. And you find the split color warmth underneath the professional. You can type that in. So I'm going to hit split, split color warmth. And I can use this slider to just warm up the warm areas. And I can then also control just the cool areas so I can really get the perfect balance that I want. And I'm really, really happy with this. And then all I need to do is hit apply. Can I see the before and after? Absolutely. So this is the before. Pretty, but if you saw this by itself, you'd say, oh, that's a nice shot. Well, I did see it. I thought that was a great shot. Right. And now I think it's an amazing shot. Right. And this is something I would really be proud <laughs> to print and hang on my wall as a really yeah. nice Yeah, you panorama. definitely see this behind your couch, you know, um, in your TV room. Right, because the TV is so big yeah. that I have to have a big panorama exactly. to balance it. And yeah, that'd be really, really nice to put it on metal. Absolutely. And it's as simple as that. I hit apply and it will go back to um, Lightroom and I can go ahead and process another image. So it's, it's as simple as that. It's, it's one of my uh, favorite things to do. And the fact that Luminar works so well as a plug-in to Lightroom. It works as a plug-in also to Photoshop. So folks who are using this don't have to worry. Uh, if they already have a workflow, they can just bring Luminar right into the equation. That's incredible. Well, hey, I've been Ellie. And I'm Abhish Shapiro. And we're part of the Skylab Education team. Thank you so much for watching.